What is up everybody? This is Michael Filesage checking in here. I hope you guys are all doing great. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about harvesting. Uh, harvesting is a big part of the whole growing process, right? Uh, it's where you finally get to pick your fruits of labor and then you dehydrate it and then you store it or you, you cook with it or whatever you do with it. Uh, but it is an important part. Namely, when you harvest is a very important part and how to harvest is also less important, but also important if you want to keep flushing from that uh, substrate especially. And is it bad if they sporulate? This is a question, this is, this is an area where, you know, a lot of people have different opinions and all that, so I want to cover all this. So I want to go a little bit in depth here. So basically here we have the substrate, right? So here we have a tiny pin, we have a little bigger pin, and we have another pin, and we have a, this isn't really a pin anymore. But anyways, everything from this point on you don't want to harvest generally from here because they, they it's not optimal. They could grow some more. So you'd want them to grow some more to maximize your uh, yield. By the way, the blue here represents the veil, right? So core lovers have veils, okay? Not all species have veils, but core lovers do have veils. And uh, a common saying is harvest just before the veil breaks, okay? So as you can see here, when there's still like really pens like this, you don't see any veil. When they're starting to get a little bigger, their head starts to get a little bigger, and they're gonna, you're gonna be able to see, you know, it's like a what you call it, you know, those fluffy things that uh, people in the past in Europe used to wear. Can't think of the name, but uh, if you if you can, then please write it down. Okay, and then and then here you see um, the cap. You know, it's growing a little bit more. And as you can see, compared to here, the cap is actually starting to open up a bit, right? It's getting wider and wider. So the veil is stretching out a bit and it's also growing upwards at the same time. So the veil, as you can see, is still stuck to this part where it was, but then it's starting to get stretched. Yeah, this isn't a very good, okay, pretend this is another fruit, right? But a good time, this is just about the point before the veil breaks, right? Or, you know, it might be kind of going like this depending on your genetics. Uh, and I'm gonna cover that as well, genetics. And because some genetics, uh, the, the veil just like falls off like here or there, you know, but the cap is still very, very closed. So it, it could actually grow a lot more. So that's why you shouldn't always stick with the saying of, oh, once the, right before the veil breaks because different phenotypes, you know, exist. And it's, it, it's quite common for it to not break when it should. And here, this is when I like to harvest personally, just because I love the way the fruit looks and everything, and it's not sporulating yet. So this is, uh, as you can see, the veil has broken, right? At this point, I like to do it. Uh, if you look at my, um, if you go to my channel and then you see like my banner photo, that's basically around the time I like to pick it. You know, the, the fruit that's in the center. I just really like the way they look. So that's when I like to personally put, pick, but generally this is also fine right before the veil breaks is all good. I'd like to add though that I don't personally always just pick fruits that look like that because it gets a lot of micromanagement and I personally don't really care too much nowadays. As long as it's not sporulated too much, I'll pick pins and stuff just if I want to clear a flush so the next flush can come in. Because you could choose to harvest them like one by one as they mature, but then it just becomes a pain to manage all of this in the dehydrator, especially when you're going for multi-spore when you have all sorts of genetic variation. So some of them will be quick some of them will be late so eventually after i let a few fruits grow out i just i'll just harvest the whole flush and just call it a day so the next flush can come in and start anew now here as you can see this is uh, way too mature it's been matured for quite a while it's already dropped all its spores and be careful because once you get to this point it'll just things will start moving really really fast if it's like this, like before you sleep, then when you wake up, it might be like that, you know? So you wanna pick it right as it's ready. And so this is basically, the cap will be all black, right? Because all the spores will go on the cap as well, you know? And as you can see, the stem is also all black because all the spores are on there. And then on the substrate surface, it's always also gonna be all black. And you might notice on the side of your tub, there's a bunch of, you know, spores on there as well. So that's also all black. Well, this is completely edible. The taste won't pack as much of a punch as you would have if you harvested it when they were smaller. But it's really, between this and that, it's really negligible and it's arguable. But the, the idea is that basically uh, once they sporulate, they've already fulfilled their biological destiny of procreating themselves, I guess you could say. So at this point, it's thought that they stop producing flavonoids. Well, but generally, it's not that significant, even if there is a difference in taste. Uh, I will say, though, there is certainly a difference in taste with the small guys compared to the bigger guys, right? So let's say uh, you have 
you have one gram of shiitake, right? And you got like one big shiitake like this, right? Okay. Now you want to use this as a, as a stock for a soup, right? There's a shiitake stock for all that umami, right? So you want all that umami. Okay, so one shiitake is actually one one gram shiitake will have less umami than let's say five of these little guys equaling one gram of shiitake, right? So the taste of the small guys will be more potent. Whereas the bigger guys, the taste, uh, it'll still taste, but it, it won't be nearly as much as the uh, five little little guys. So th this is a fact. So with that, I could say absolute confidence. But then again, to maximize the amount of overall flavonoids that are in, for example, shiitake, it just makes sense. You're going to be getting more flavonoids in the long run if you just let them mature like this, but not too much, but like this. So yeah, ultimately you are going to be winning if you harvest them when they're a little mature like that, these two guys. All right, so let's talk about, uh, oh yeah, back to the sporulation part. So a lot of people say that once you sporulate, you know, and especially in like Reddit and stuff, you know, where misinformation prevails, basically they'll say that, oh, once it sporulates and that's, you know, throw away your tub because it's going to contam. Uh, it's, it's like, they basically make it seem like as if it's a death sentence for your tub. Okay, if you sporulate it, okay, finish. Okay, toss your tub before it gets trichoderma. And that's complete BS. Now, given there is an increased chance of contamination, I have personally never had that happen to me, but I know I, there are people I trust who say that, yes, this is true. Uh, I just personally haven't had it. I've had tubs going for, for four plus months, right? And just kept growing, 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 just straight core, not poo or anything. So that's why I kept going with clean spawn. It'll just keep going indefinitely, basically, until it basically stopped producing. And there was a, there were a couple times where I've had fruits like sporulate a bunch because I did, forgot to harvest or didn't realize there was a fruit in there. And uh, completely fine. You know, they just kept going. And the reason I tossed that tub is because I just got bored and I needed to use that shoe box for some other stuff. You know, the shoe, the, the substrate was so small by the end of it. And it was producing just tiny amounts of fruit, so it wasn't really worth it. But it is also true because the because basically the spore layer is just like another layer where it's where the mycelium is not colonized. So the idea is that you know contaminations can actually grow on all those spores. That's the idea. So generally, you don't want it. But the main reason that I avoid sporulation is because it's really really bad for your lungs. Okay, so maybe if you just have like one tub and you don't have any pre-existing, you know, like lung problems or anything, you don't have emphysema or asthma, you know, then then it'll take quite a long time of doing this and quite a few tubs, but but no guarantees though. It could take actually a small amount as well, depending on the person. So I just don't risk it because if you don't have those illnesses, then you could develop it as well. And that that's a fact as well, you know. Um, People who grow mushrooms have also gotten lung problems from just inhaling too many spores, especially species like oyster mushrooms. They sporulate a crap ton. They're very aggressive. So uh, you really want to watch your lungs. So that's why I say it's best to just harvest them before it spor sporulates, especially if you have quite a few tubs going. But if you have one tub going, one little tub and it ends up sporulating, it's not the end of the world. And it's going to take, it's probably going to take a little more than that. But, um, and I'm also speaking of personal experience here with the spores. So that's why I, I'm careful with it because I used to grow in my bedroom and when I, you know, I, I noticed a, quite a significant decrease in my breathing ability after having quite a few tubs going and letting them sporulate here and there. So I just, just avoid it. All right, so let's talk about the harvesting methods. Okay, so uh, the twist and pull method, that's one method that's popular and the cut method. Now the twist and pull method, I gotta say is a little bit, um, misleading because people think, okay, that's all I got to do. Twist and pull, twist and pull. That's not always the case though. Uh, it depends on the genetics you have. Some genetics are super easy. It's like taking off marshmallows, you know, like for example, the um, envious of the phallus series of uh, varieties, right? Basically those guys are just super easy. It's just like a, taking a pillow off. So you don't even really need to twist and pull oftentimes, uh, but that's not only particular to the envious of the phallus varieties. For example, uh, just with regular core lover, you know, genetics not mutated at all, you're, you could have some that, for example, you just pull and it's actually going to take less substrate than if you were actually to twist it. So things like this, you can't really teach it just by talking about it. It's just by experiencing it, feeling it, you know, that tactile sensation of you doing it. It's not a big deal if you take out a big chunk of substrate, especially if you have like a big cluster. Sometimes, you know, you will take a big chunk, but it's not the end of the world. An old myth that was flying around for years 
was that all the primordia that you're ever going to have is going to be made before the first flush. If you, for example, take out a chunk of substrate with some primordia, you will never, the, the primordia will never grow back. So that spot is like a dead zone. Nothing's going to grow from it. That's complete BS. They will, they will make primordia again. And this was a very, very trusted cultivator. And I still trust and I still look up to, but you know, as they say, you know, like as a hobby just progresses, you know, this is just the whole history of, you know, the hobby or anything, right? The more, the more time uh, goes with people, you know, experimenting, you know, we find out new things. So that's the way it goes. So there's no shame in that either. And being wrong is it just means that it's a good thing because it means progress is basically being made uh, the way I see it. You know, failure is something that's very, just as important as success, if not more important than success, you know? Uh, so don't feel bad if you fail or if you trick out. That's how it goes, guys. Don't let anybody make you feel bad. As long as you're trying to improve, that's that's what's important, right? Because there's no success without failure. It's, it's just not the way it goes, right? It, the way I see it, I don't even see it as failure. It's experimentation. Intelligent experimentation is fantastic. But, you know, if you're experimenting and, you know, there's a lot of evidence against it and a lot of people have already tried it and you haven't done your due research into what exactly you're trying to do, then that's sort of a waste of time in my opinion. And what I really mean here is, you know, over the years, I see this all the time. People come in, they have this crazy idea or so they think, but they don't realize that like they're like the hundredth person person coming in with this idea. And if they just do a quick Google search, they'll realize that this has already been tried a million times, maybe to some success, maybe to no success. If they really want to keep stick with that idea, then look at all of the available evidence that they have online and see, okay, so what, why did this fail? How could I improve it? That's intelligent experimentation. Uh, you know, not just saying, oh, I have this crazy idea, I'm going to do it. Meanwhile, you know, over decades, people have already tried it numerous times and they just didn't even bother to look that up. But anyways, so basically this is the other method. It's basically using a knife, uh, a sharp knife, right? And you just basically cut the base of the stem. Now, a misinformation about this uh, is that people say, oh, it's going to contaminate the stubs start to rot. And let me tell you this, if your stubs start to rot, then that means your tub was going to contaminate anyways. Because if you have clean spawn, I'm sorry, I keep saying clean spawn, but that's because it is really, really, really vital to success and not having contamination. If you have clean spawn, you should not be contaminating after you cut this. The mycelium should be reclaiming it. Uh, so if you are contaminating with it, I would check out your sterile technique. It's a bacterial problem. Basically, you know, if your spawn is clean and everything, you shouldn't have any problem doing it. I personally like the twist and pull method. Uh, this method is good if you if you have like tons and tons and tons and tons of like monotubs, you, you know, and you're harvesting it all day, like you're like a commercial farmer or something, whatever. I I, I personally don't grow that much because I, I don't see the need to. So I just like to twist and pull, you know, maybe get one, uh, three flushes out of a tub and then just dump them nowadays. I don't keep them going for too long. So anyways, uh, I think I've covered most. Oh, yes. And if you want to clone a fruit, don't get them at this point. I wouldn't recommend getting them at this point either. Maximum at this point, maybe even this point. The younger, the better uh, if you want to clone a fruit because you don't want to have spores all over the stipe. You know, you don't want to have, you don't, then it's invisible too. If you pick this fruit up, there's going to be, a, it's going to release a bunch of spores and there's going to be a cloud of spores all around. Now, what's going to happen if you take that to an agar dish and try to take a piece of the thing, right? How do you know that what you're growing on your plate is the actual tissue culture or a bunch of spores or both of them mixed together? That's no good. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, definitely go earlier is better if you want to make a clone. So basically that's, I guess, all I wanted to say today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys found this educational. Hit the like, leave a comment. It really helps me out, guys. All right, all. Thank you for watching. Michael File Sage, checking out.